Hi guys, it's Phoebe from Who's Phoebe and welcome back to another Doctor Who video. So apologies about the pyjamas, it's like nearly one o'clock by the time I'm filming this, but there is a particular reason why. I just watched the third episode of Doctor Who. I couldn't wait, I was originally going to watch this at 6.50, but I decided, no, this was such a good episode. And this was the return of the Moffat, the Moth as I like to call him, Stephen Moffat. I knew this episode was going to be good from like the trailer and the pictures that we'd gotten and we hadn't got any exclu exclusive clip this week so that was really more exciting. And I was very interested in the concept of this episode because Ruby's still a fairly new companion of the Doctors, you know, this was going to like chuck her into doing just right away, like really happy about that. But this episode was action packed and I like that. This is Doc, this is to me, this feels like Doctor Who again. The Devil's Chord felt like that, and Boom also feels like that as well in this in this concept. It feels very back to like 2005 Doctor Who to me now. It feels very very like that. Um, you know, it feels very more Doctor Who that I know and love rather than Space Babies and stuff like that. So this was very very interesting. So the whole premise of the story was basically the Doctor and Ruby are on this war-torn planet except there's more to it than meets the eye and I love Ruby's reaction of when she looks up at the sky and sees the planets in the sky I think it's such a brilliant moment and definitely takes me back to Russell D. Davis's original era with he did that with Companions Martha as well so I just feel like it's very very reminiscent of old Doctor Who, old 2005 Doctor Who. It has that very very sort of vibe towards it, first alien planet and all of that. The Doctor standing on a landmine and not being able to move, this was also a particularly interesting concept as well because we know the Doctor has, to, we know the Doctor likes to do certain things and because he was standing on this landmine, he had to remain calm the whole time. So because Stephen Moffat knows his Doctor Who, I think this worked really well because the Doctor had to remain calm. The one thing he is not good at. I think you, know, I think you can all agree with me that the Doctor is not good at remaining calm. It is the one thing he is terrible at. He's the type of person who... Um, who is more angry and can be calm in some state, but standing on a landline, he has to stay very set and very calm for a prolonged period of time. And there was these like casket things and Ruby was like, I'm gonna walk up to you and I'm gonna hand it to you. You've got a better chance of the mine not going off if I do this. And she was absolutely correct and I just completely loved her bravery in that scene that definitely shows her to be a brave companion going up to the doctor with this casket in her hand handing it to him and then he was able to put his foot down he obviously he still had to keep one foot on the mind but he was able to put the second foot down on the ground sort of evenly balance it all out because he couldn't stand on one foot for the entire episode it would have just not worked so I liked that so the doctor has to obviously keep his weight on this landmine otherwise it's going to go boom and that was kind of the concept of the episode, which I really enjoyed. What I also enjoyed is the um, is Mandy. I really enjoyed her and also Splice as a side character. And the reason I know their names is they have so many good scenes with the Doctor and Ruby. And then when Splice learns that her dad has has died, essentially, Ruby is like pulling her away from the hologram of her dad and hugging her and telling her that everything's going to be okay and I really do generally like that concept of the episode having Ruby there being compassionate and splice learning that her dad has died but what I also love is the fact they stay around the doctor so the doctor is like standing there thinking right I have to remain calm I'm staying on my mind if I move it goes off and the doctor's obviously time lord or essentially so 
However, I mean, I this was a really good episode and I really did enjoy it. It was such a s intense situation that the Doctor and Ruby were both in. However, Ruby getting shot, that was interesting. Because when she gets shot and when the ambulance kind of says patient acquired, it wasn't meant to be Ruby. Mandy was like, shoot my arm when she gave Ruby the gun. It was like, you know, meant to be her, but you know, ignoring that part. It snowed again, which I'm now getting more and more intrigued about because it snowed in the Space Babies and then it snowed again in the Devil's Cord. Now that is distinctly interesting. I need to know who Ruby Sunday is and I'm getting interested in roping into this whole who is Ruby Sunday mystery now. This is getting more and more interesting because it's not turns out it's not just the doctor and ruby who can see the snow it was those side characters who could see it as well so this is now getting really really sort of interesting and entwining into who ruby actually is and hopefully we'll get some answers next week and again we have that susan twist thing we saw her in the 60th, we've also seen her in the church on Ruby Road, the Space Babies, and of course the Devil's Cord, and now Boom. And this person seems to be following Ruby around, and it's very, very intriguing that she seems to be following Ruby around, and I think now that she's now going to be appearing in the second episode, us Whovians are going to start linking things together about who she might be and theorising that she could be Ruby's mother and all of this stuff, which I think she very well might be. So this is, so that's interesting, the Susan Twist thing again. I know I didn't mention it in, my, in um, the review I did last week with the Space Babies and the Devil's Cord, but I wanted to mention it here because it seems too much of a coincidence not to mention this whole susan twist thing now this is in this is now getting more and more interesting about who ruby is because this face seems to be following her around time and space the doctor however saving the day seemed a bit rushed at the end it seemed like they were running out of time and decided they needed to rush things just a, just a, just 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 a tad um because he said there's no like war going on they're just fighting themselves and their landmines so when the doctors stood on it it suddenly turns red obviously detecting and then it's like you're, you're not you're not a threat goes back to grooming and the doctor finally steps off but ruby almost dying doesn't sit well with me like if she's important, don't kill her off in this episode. Obviously, they didn't, thank goodness. But it felt very, 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 very wrong. And that's a lot of varies, but I stand on that point there. But this episode as a whole was a very, very intense situation. The Doctor was trapped in this very intense situation couldn't move without setting the landmine off and was trying to save the world while standing without moving now however for the negatives now there is going to be always some negatives in doctor episodes i always i always obviously point that out oh the side characters were good however there was two things I didn't like about this episode. I didn't like how quickly it wrapped up. I feel like this would have been better in a two-parter, just generally because that's me. I feel like this would have been better in two parties. And also, secondly, I didn't like the idea of Ruby getting hurt and nearly dying. Mostly because it just felt like they did that just so that the doctor would start panicking and the landmine would go off 
because the doctor can't panic in a situation like this when he stands on a landmine and believe me the doctor does panic when any, any of his companions are in danger so it just felt to me like that was a little bit they did that deliberately just so the doctor would panic and then have to try and calm himself down so that's why I didn't like that part of Ruby nearly dying on the Doctor because it's like, oh no, the Doctor's in danger and now Ruby's been hurt. You know, how is he going to do this? And because obviously the Doctor was standing there, he couldn't really attend to Ruby. You know, he couldn't really attend to her and, you know, give her the medical treatment that she needed at that time. But the fact that they reversed the ambulance to revive her just seemed a bit like, yeah, that was lit that was literally so obvious. You know, that was such an obvious thing to do. That's why I felt like it lacked the mystery in that because, like, it it was just so obvious what... It was just so obvious what to do. You just put a computer virus into the ambulance computer thing and then you can revive Ruby. It just... I saw that coming. And I like Stephen Moffat's Doctor Who. It's amazing, like you know but it just felt like that you know it was a bit predictable what they were going to do to save ruby but i didn't see the whole ruby getting her coming that was like oh my god however i liked the cold open now boom for doctor who and cold opens again not the first episode though the devil's called raining and cold open this cold open five minutes in the doctor's standing on my mind then, then you get the titles Boom, boom, boom. Well done, Stephen Moffat, for doing that. I loved that. Loved that cold open of the Doctor standing on landmine. Suddenly, cue titles, cue intro, and then you get into the episode. That really sets the president of that episode because the reason why is when you get that sudden cold open, you, you get hooked into the story. And the minute I got that, I was hooked. After those five minutes and that cold open and then the titles ran, I was hooked. Like, properly, properly hooked into that episode. You know, I love that. Cold open, tick. So that's what this episode did really, really well. Cold open, tick. Intense situation for the Doctor, tick. The Doctor having to remain calm the entire episode, tick. The Doctor not, n not allowed to panic at certain moments, Congratulations, congrats Stephen Moffat, congrats, you made this episode very much enjoyable. And I am very much looking forward to next week, 73 Yards, which believe it or not, airs on my 21st birthday. So, woohoo for that one. Um, I am very, 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 very interested in next week's episode. Also, um, in total, out of 10, I would give Boom a solid 10 out of 10. And I'm being honest when I say that. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up if you did. And make sure you click that very subscribe button down below. And also click that notification bell so you get notifications every single time I upload. And also, watch out for my podcast on Thursday talking about Boom. And the theories for next week and who the mysterious woman that is following Ruby around actually is. Obviously, we won't know that until the final episode of this series, but until then, I am very much looking forward to seeing what next week brings on my 21st, and I cannot wait to do that. Um, and I cannot wait to watch that. That's such a nice way to start my birthday off as well, you know, 21. But yeah, I'm very much looking forward to next week's episode, 73 Yards, and then the episode after that, but I guess we'll see. But yeah. Give us a thumbs up and also um, check out my podcast, which is in the link below. It's on my YouTube channel. I'm having a guest on there this week to give us, me and Luke will have a guest on there this week to see who likes it. But yeah, so um, at, in the words of my favourite doctor, and this is not Scooty's doctor, Alonzi.